boyfriend likes my girlfriend and I cry in vain. Please help me in my agony. Dear Jane, dear Jane, dear Jane. Agony. editorial meeting, 11.30, you're seeing Mr Mintz, the man who's been writing to you. Mm -hmm. One o'clock, you're due at the radio station for the phone-in. 2.30, lunch with the Family Planning Association. Your mother rang twice and your husband once. I think you should try and comb your hair. Will you do a favour for me this morning, Val? Surely. Close your mouth. Your teeth are blinding me. <laughs> Better? Mm. How do you feel? Uh, well, for Monday morning, that's not bad. <sighs> Lawrence was talking in his sleep again last night. At one point, he even started singing. You know that song that goes, grab your coat and get your hat, leave your... Leave your worries on the doorstep. Life could be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I didn't know you couldn't sing. <laughs> there are lots of things I can't do you don't know about. Please, your mouth, my eyes. Whatever possessed you to marry a psychiatrist in the first place? Well, I was just crazy about him. <laughs> Listen, Farrah Fawcett, can you type better than you can sing? I was Pitman's pin-up, three years running. <laughs> Hello, Agony and Advice Department, how can I help you? This is my television isn't working. So bring it in and I'll talk to it. Well, could you come over and fix it like last time? You fixed it so well. Mm, that way it's broken again. Do you want me to miss Sailor the Century tonight? Mother, I couldn't wish for a nicer thing to happen to you. <laughs> well, just come over and see me then. I'm all by myself. I'll make you some nice matzo ball soup. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Mother. <laughs> Listen, did you get that book I sent you? Oh, yeah, you, you mean yoga for your poodle? <laughs> I think Sophie's a little bit tense. Yes, I know, but, well, I couldn't seem to get her legs to stay in the lotus position. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Ma, my other phone's ringing. Hello, Misery and Agony Department, how can you help me? Hello, is that Jane Lucas? This is Jane Lucas. It's been a long time since we've spoken, perhaps you won't remember me. Oh, indeed I do. It's neglected of Neesden, isn't it? No, Jane, it's horny of hamsters. <laughs> Can I see you tonight? And if so, how will I recognise you? Well, I'll be carrying a rolled-up copy of Dalton's Weekly under one arm, a hot water bottle under the other, and I'll pin a pink carnation to me wincy it. Bang goes another night of unrestrained passion. Look, Jane, I've been taking your blasted messages all morning. The Simon Master Show wants to know if you'll be a guest. Some gullible publisher wants to know if you'll write about the ideal marriage. Ha ha. And Jane, I should like to know if you told a group called the Anal Compulsives they could rehearse here today. All right, I didn't. Don't lie to me, Jane. It's like a bloody discotheque in here and I can't get any work done. But, but, but I thought Tuesdays were your days at the hospital. Uh, today, Jane, is Monday. I'm trying to finish my book. I'm sorry. It's just their mothers wouldn't let them rehearse in their own home. I'm not surprised. Look, Jane, you have to keep coming to the rescue of every transvestite, transsexual, anorexic, paranoid, uptight, laid-back, punk freak. When is it? When is it my turn, Jane? You believe tonight, if you play your cards right? In the meantime, why don't you talk to your mother-in-law? <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Diana. Uh, just one moment, Diana. I have someone on the other line. <laughs> yes. OK, I'll be right there. Bye. Hello, darlings. I'll have to call you back later. Listen, if you're having a contest, it's ended in a draw. <laughs> I know just what Diana will say. My God, Jane, you look awful. Didn't you sleep last night, dear? Yes. Yes. Well, just a little makeup wouldn't hurt, and uh, maybe have your hair streaked. You don't have to be a glamour queen, dear, but don't walk around looking so distracting. It's bad for office morale. Emily! 
Lily always looked stunning when she had your job. Yes, she could afford to. Her husband was a chain of hairdressers. <laughs> yes, Emily was an example to us all here at Person Magazine. Her photos never had to be retouched. And neither did she. <laughs> Look, Diana, we've been through all this before now. Do you want to talk about my column or am I here for a facelift? Look, take one of these samples. They've just come in. Lewd lavender self-lubricating lipstick from Close Encounters Cosmetics. <laughs> Someone must be kidding. Don't you like lavender? <laughs> Diana, it's a joke. Well, you don't actually have to use it, dear. Just let the other girls in the office see you walking round with it. Now, Jane, I've been going through your copy. <laughs> write about another swinging granny again this week. Ah. I mean, this one's even divorced and has a lesbian daughter. It's all very depressing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these strange people that you select to write about are just not person people. But actually, now, Emily <laughs> used to print marvellous homemade recipes for removing warts. Yeah, Why yes, can't yes, you? Yes, yes, but people were afraid to ask Emily the things they asked me because they were afraid they'd get their legs smacked. Now, I am more than an advice columnist. I am a grief therapist. <laughs> Couldn't we at least pluck your eyebrows? Hands off, Diana, hands off. I may look like Groucho Marx, but it gets me plenty of laughs, which I can use these days. Listen, sweetie, I won't leave in a half. I'll leave in a minute now. <laughs> I'm amazed that you tolerated your husband's temper for so long. Right, now say, if he's now turned his violence towards the children, you better act and act quickly. Include the address of the local battered wives' refuge and say, don't hesitate to get in touch if the going gets rough, but get your heart high and get on with it. And then sign it in the usual way. Right. Oh, Jane, you must write to the battered uh, husband in Sidcup. Oh, yeah. He gets out of the hospital on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Minch. Shall I send him in? Oh, please. <sighs> Excuse the mess, Mr. Minch. You look terribly busy. I think I should come back some other time. No, 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 please. Sit down. Well, all right then. Now, would you like some coffee? I don't drink. Oh. <laughs> Tell me, how can I help you? I need a cigarette. I'll just pop down and get a pack of them. No, have one, please. <laughs> Are you sure no one can hear us? Absolutely. You see, it's very personal. Yes, I understand. Go on. I've never told a living soul before. What? And I don't think I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Please, sit no, down. No, I really must go. The car's double parked. Mr. My Mince. wife will be worried about it. Oh, there Mince. I am. The cat's sick. Mr. Mintz, you have written me two very nice letters. You've telephoned me four times, and I still haven't the faintest idea what your problem is. I'm sorry to have been so much trouble. Now, Mr. Mintz, is your problem your car? No. <laughs> is your problem your wife? No. <laughs> Mr. Mintz. Why won't you tell me what your problem is? Because... Because it's my problem. <laughs> Frankly, if that's your attitude, I'm not surprised your wife reacted as she did. You're a bore, do you know that? I'd probably leave you myself. All right, Richard, I assume that answers your question. Before we take our next caller, let's pay the rent. You know, Jane, beneath these clothes, I am totally naked. You have no idea what that does to me. Can I come over tonight? No. Nope. Oh, come on, we can play it by ear and work our way down. You want to talk to my husband about it? I don't understand how you can resist me. Well, frankly, dear, I find you totally resistible. Happen in Radio 242, and the next on the line is Gary from Lewisham. Hello, Gary. Excuse me, Jane, but are you a follower of the Hebrew faith? Uh, no, I prefer to stay in one place. <laughs> I see. Well, let me put it this way, Jane. Are you, or have you ever been Jewish? Yes. Are you? Well, let me put it this way. I'm a member of a patriotic organisation called Britannia's Front. So what can a nice Jewish girl do for you? Britannia's Front 
it is very anti your lot. Okay, I apologise for my existence. What else do you want to know? We are also anti black. I know, and you're against brown, yellow, red, and people called Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you don't approve of sex unless it's done by consenting adults in the privacy of their own minds, and you think all homosexuals should be sent back where they came from. And we want to deport all your kind, too. Every one of you mongrelized workers. Okay, okay. Women I'll get a nose job, sex change, and lobotomy first thing in the morning. In the meantime, why don't you continue this conversation in the privacy of what passes for your mind? Your turn will come. Your time has gone. Heavy. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were three little bears, and now there are thousands of the hairy little bastards. <laughs> well, moving right along here, kids, and the next caller on the line is Beatrice from North London. Hello, Beatrice. Yes? Who do you want to talk to, Beatrice? My question is for Jane. Uh, go ahead, Beatrice. Yes, well, I would like to know what you think of a daughter who never rings her mother, much less comes to see her, but has time to speak to perfect strangers over the <laughs> Uh, I feel sure, Beatrice, that your daughter will come and see you tonight. I'll have a word with her myself. B, it must be Mother's Day. Yes, well, it's about time. Listen, it's no prize being a mother these days. You turn on the radio and all you ever hear is sex, sex, sex and other intimate details, which I would rather not hear about. Excuse me, but... Excuse me, young lady. Uh, nudity on the stage is one thing, but on the radio it's ridiculous. <laughs> a mother's brought her daughter up on better things than sex. Now, what have you got to say about that? Your daughter has all my sympathy. Hmm. <laughs> if anyone else calls, I'm out. <laughs> the alcohol. Look what I brought you. Here we are. Give stem erection, leaf lift and bloom boost. Maybe I should take some myself. Jay, perhaps when you finish counselling your plants, your parrots and your people, you could spare me ten seconds. Ten seconds coming up. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-mm. Mm. We're into overtime. Oh. Uh, now, 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 Jay, now that I have your mind, as it were, all in one place, perhaps we can have a little meaningful interface. Hmm? Mm, we could even talk, if you like. <laughs> you, uh, those clothes make you look like an Italian gigolo. Oh, really? He's out of work. <laughs> Jane, Jay, these clothes reveal the quintessential me, you know. I'm too young to conform. Is that what you wanted to talk about? No, 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 Jane, you know, you really... You really don't know where my head is at these days, Jane. You see, the basic facts are... I knew it. Who have you invited over? Absolutely no one. But I think I can guess who it is. Ah, Andy, it's you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, to be perfectly honest, Lawrence, I came over to seduce your wife. Right, you better come in. She's on the sofa. I knew I could count on you, Lawrence. <laughs> oh, Lawrence, those clothes are pure nostalgia, man. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Oh, you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ripped, I'm torn in two. Do you want to risk a little tear? Uh -uh. You know that stuff always makes me feel dopey. Mm -hmm. Now look, would you be a dear and go into the bedroom and watch Police Five or something? Lawrence and I are trying to have a serious husband and wife conversation. Now shoot. Ah, ah. Mm. Oh, well, in that case, I shall get out of your hair and go into the bedroom and play with Shaw Taylor. God, what a thought. <laughs> Just remember what the Maharishi said. Reality is for people who cannot cope with drugs. <laughs> Bye, Andy. 
Oh, darling, Lawrence, you look tense. Shall I rub your back or something? No, 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 no Jane, I must say, I must say this very fast, Jane. I haven't got much time left. You see, the basic facts are... Oh! Damn! 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 It's for you. Thank you, darling. Hello. <laughs> this can only be one person. How are you, Mother? <laughs> oh, I'm not so well. My asthma's terrible, you can hear. I can hardly breathe at all. Mm, are you sure you're not just tired, all these phone-in programmes? Listen, Mrs. Know-it-all, I'm not just tired. Even a hypochondriac can be ill. Yeah. Listen, listen, all right, Mark. Lawrence and I are trying to have a serious husband and wife conversation. He's trying to tell me the basic facts. Listen, Jane, I would very much appreciate a little filial consideration when you come over, because, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not feeling myself. Oh, dear. Oh, Mother, I, I forgot, and I've got somebody here at the moment. I'm sorry. Now, don't be sorry, Jane. Just come over tonight. You promised me. Yeah. Look, listen, Mark. I don't Ma. want any more of your excuses. Uh, <gasps> my chest. Oh. My chest. <laughs> Mother, please. Are you coming to see me? <laughs> Mother, I can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Don't you ever phone me again. I no longer have a daughter. <laughs> oh, dear. I think I just got orphaned again. Now, darling, what were you trying... No, I'll take the phone off the hook. Now then, darling. You just tell me the basic facts. Yeah, now, the fundamental issues... Fundamental issues. Oh, God, Jane, this isn't easy. I have to find the right words, you see. Yeah. At this moment in time, I just want to say... <laughs> Who the hell is that? How the hell do you know? <laughs> Hi, Jane. Hello. Sorry we're late. It's oh. his fault. Oh. Uh, that's all right. Oh, who invited you over? <laughs> we knew you'd forget. No. You have, haven't you? Well, no, of course not. I haven't forgotten. I just can't remember, that's all. It's our anniversary. You insisted we came over for a celebration dinner. Oh, of course. It's your rubber anniversary, <laughs> isn't it? Come on in. <laughs> Do you have anything healthy in the house that I could drink to my sunflower seeds, Jane? Yoghurt on the rocks. <laughs> Hello, Lawrence. You look very trendy. I always said Jane had the brains, but you'd got the looks. Mind you, I think you've overdone the Grecian 2000. <laughs> I've uh, been worrying a lot lately. Oh, that time of the month, eh? <laughs> yeah, that time of my life. Have you tried vitamin E, Lawrence? What for? Can be very helpful for the midlife crisis. Uh, Robert, why don't you take your sunflower seeds and plant them up your... Ask your and make yourself comfortable, OK? Cheers. Good, there you are. Oh. Well, now, how long has it been for you two? It's three years today since you introduced us. No, hmm? and you're still happily unmarried. We've made for each other. Well, the only reason we row is because we enjoy kissing and making up. How sweet. <laughs> Lawrence, look what I brought you. Homemade nut roast. Ooh. It's organic. Mm. Oh, my God, it's the Goy Liberation Front. <laughs> it's gay liberation. <laughs> I thought you were Jewish. Only when I want Saturdays off. <laughs> Would you like a puff? I don't think that's at all funny. And yes, please. Here, have a hash tray. Oh, oh, Jane. <laughs> Jane, Jane, it is manifestly clear that now is as good a moment in time as any to try to communicate to you the, in single terms, the urgency of my problem. Good God, Lawrence, you're not pregnant, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what, on my schedule? You must be joking. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, darling. Do go on. Jane, damn it, I'm leaving you. What? I said, Jane, damn it, I'm leaving you. I heard you. The basic facts are, Jane, our marriage is simply something you do when you're not at the office or at the studio. Oh, I admit that when we met, I was a, an emotional mess. You encouraged me with my work, you nursed me through my first two nervous breakdowns, but now, Jane, I can stand on my own two feet. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. You see, Jane, you're always saying to get anywhere, you have to move forward. Well, I'm moving out. Darling, listen... Lawrence, I mean, don't you think we should talk this over a bit? I mean, surely you're cancelling our relationship like this should be a joint decision. It is. You're smoking the joint. I've made the decision. <laughs> Where are you going, Lawrence? Now, um, well, I've booked myself a room at the Playboy Club. Well, I have to find myself. At the Playboy Club? 
Yeah. I'll come with you, Lawrence. I may not find myself, but I'll have a great time looking. <laughs> Maybe we should disappear. No, no, there'll be plenty of room when uh, I've gone. Sorry, I don't want to introduce a note of bitchiness in the proceedings, but I was just wondering, is there another woman? Well, Jane, to be perfectly honest, I'd have to say, sort of. Sort of a woman. Ah, I think I could guess who that might be. Your psychiatrist? Yes. Yes, she thinks that my leaving you might simply be a, an attention-getting device. Well, you have my attention. Don't leave. Oh, Jane, you're needed by so many people, but my life is empty. I'm dissatisfied with my work, with my book, with my patients. I've almost missed the boat. I've got to go out and catch it. You really don't love me anymore. Well, my psychiatrist thinks I do, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Could you forward my mail to me at the Playboy Club? Oh, by all means. I hope you and the bunnies will be extremely happy. Oh, now, Jane, don't lower the tone of this conversation. We've been doing so well. Oh, have we? Well, I'm sorry not to feel as smug about this as you obviously do, but you see, I'm going to miss you. I, I think I'd better leave now. I'm beginning to feel certain symptoms of uh, guilt. Uh, Look, I'm, I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. Well, nothing more to say, is there? I'll just... Grab my coat and get my hat. I left my suitcase on the doorstep. <laughs> well, I just hope the other side of the street is as sunny as you think it is, Lawrence. Well. <laughs> Goodbye, Jane. Jane, mm -hmm. are you all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is the crucial test, isn't it? I mean, um, I must practice what I preach, mustn't I? I mean, it wouldn't do if I were to let out a great big scream right now, would it? Jane, do you see where I left my car keys? Yeah, they're in your jacket pocket. Oh. You're wearing it. Oh. <laughs> Good. What would I do without you? <laughs> I'm awfully sorry I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Force of habit, I suppose. Yes, well, I'll give you a... Ring? Yes. My, 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 my. Just think, Jane. You are now a free woman. A Prince Charming could be just around the corner. Or a mugger. <laughs> yes, well, no grief on an empty stomach, eh? I shall leap into the kitchen and prepare you my radio station speciality. A macaroni marconi, eh? <laughs> I am actually on fire. I must be in excruciating pain. Funny, I can't feel a thing. Uh, <clears throat> tell me, fellas, was, was Lawrence here just now? Afraid so. And 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 did he leave me? That's what he said. Mm. Look, Jane, if there's anything you want. Anything at all. Help? Good morning, Mrs. Lucas. Is it? You're in very early today. Am I? I'm very sorry I ran out of your office yesterday. I'm very ashamed of myself. Are you all right now? No, not really. I've been up all night, walking and thinking. It hasn't been easy in these shoes. <laughs> you look as if you've had a rough night. So do you, I'm afraid. Yes, yes, I did. If you could find the time to see me again, I promise I won't run away. Would you like some coffee? I really would. Mrs. Lucas. Mm. Tell me honestly, is it really normal to want to dress in women's clothes? Sure. I've even done it myself sometimes. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.